Hey there, welcome to the Artist Greenhouse. My name is Steph and today we're gonna be painting some Christmas trees and chatting about Instagram because apparently that was on my mind while I was painting these Christmas trees. So let's talk about supplies first. So I've got this palette of pre-mixed colors that I've been using for a while and I'm gonna clean it out and fill it up with some greens. So I'm just gonna pick all of my green gouache and I'm gonna fill up this metal tin with just straight from the tube colors this time. I'm not gonna do any mixes. So these are all the greens that I'm using. And I've got my palette filled up now with all my beautiful greens. And I've added in a few extra colors. I have an opera pink, an indigo blue, and then three yellows, and then also um, some brown colors. I've got a russet, a red oxide, and a peony. And then I made myself this little card here so I can kind of um, get used to the colors that I wanna use as I start painting Christmas trees in this sketchbook spread. So I'm using a number two round brush, and then I've also got a number zero round brush that I'll use when I start painting the details on the Christmas tree. But this number two round, is going to be good for starting. Now, most of the greens that I have are kind of moody. <laughs> so these are going to be like some moody, earthy Christmas trees instead of like the, the usual sort of like green Christmas <laughs> colors that you see in Christmas designs. Um, I don't know about you. I really love Christmas, but I actually don't like making art for Christmas. Um, you know, I'm, I dabble in art licensing and, you know, one of the pieces of advice for art licensing is that Christmas designs will always sell. So for years I tried to make Christmas designs and they never sold <laughs> ever. Um, I just think because my heart wasn't really in it. And I think that that really just showed through the art that I wasn't really into it. I just don't dig the colors or like the, the, the symbols and the icons, like it's not my jam. I would rather, I would rather draw and paint and illustrate birds and flowers. Um, and that's always done best for me, both in like licensing and in children's book illustration. Those things that I love doing are the things that tend to bring in like the most financial benefit for me too. So that's a good thing. So I'm just starting by painting in nine different tree shapes and I'm just varying the shapes, the sizes, and the colors. So we'll have a nice variation of shapes as we, um, as we go through here. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna fill up this page with some tree shapes first, just using some different brush strokes and some different shapes to fill in. And while I'm doing that, something that's been on my mind as an artist who, you know, A, makes art herself, and has to market it and then B supports other artists who are trying to grow their own businesses. I've been thinking about Instagram a lot and I've been thinking about Instagram a lot because I see so many people struggling with Instagram. I feel like every time I log on these days, I see an Instagram story from an artist about low engagement. Um, and that sucks. Like, you know, it sucks. I see some people who are still doing really well, um, but I see, you know, the majority of people really seem to be struggling to get a foothold on Instagram these days. And, you know, I think that what I really want to say, first of all, is that, you know, everyone is kind of struggling with Instagram. And I think that the unfortunate thing for artists is that the way that Instagram is right now is working really well for Instagram. You know, Instagram is making more money than ever. They're seeing a larger user base than ever. So Instagram is going to keep being the way that it is. That's a fact. It's, it's never going to go back to the way that it was before algorithms because Instagram is a business and Instagram is going to do what Instagram needs to do to make the most money. And they make the most money when they have the most eyeballs on their app because that means more people seeing their ads. So it's always in their best interest to you know, A, not show your content, not show your art because they want you to be paying for ads. Um, and then B, show whatever gimmicky thing is getting more people to stay on the app. So those are just facts. <laughs> you know, like it's, it, it, it's hard to realize that like, you know, I, for example, 
have been on Instagram for over 10 years. It was a big part of how I marketed my art business for a really long time. And there's almost like a grieving process when you realize that something that you've put so much time into is no longer providing what you need it to provide. Um, so as an artist and as an art teacher, that's meant that over the last couple of years, I have found different ways to market my art. I have focused on different things. I do still use Instagram, but my main goal with Instagram is to get people on my email list. That's, that's the goal because I know that when people are on my email list, they are more likely to buy my art, buy my classes, um, support me in some way. So for me, Instagram is, you know, for my art account, I would say Instagram is almost like a portfolio at this point. So if art directors are looking for a children's book illustrator and they're looking for, you know, they're searching on maybe like a, a hashtag picture book artist or something like that. They'll see my art there. Maybe they'll like it. Maybe they'll hire me. I've gotten plenty of children's book projects over the years from Instagram. So that is, you know, what I'm assuming Instagram does for me is that it can still get my art in front of art directors and customers and clients who might want to work with me or might want to buy my art. But the ultimate goal is to, you know, outside of art directors, the ultimate goal is to get people on my email list. So that's, that's my purpose on Instagram. And I'm spending way more time these days on other ways of marketing and connecting with a community around my art. So for me, over the last couple of years or so, that has meant, again, spending more time focusing on getting people onto my email lists, um, spending more time on Pinterest, using that to drive traffic to my websites, which works really well for me, focusing on SEO on my websites, both on my portfolio site and on this website, The Artist Greenhouse. And trying out things like this, like, you know, trying out this YouTube channel as a way to connect with people um, within the artist greenhouse and to introduce them to my art and my way of teaching. Uh, this is something that I wouldn't have done in the past, but when Instagram went pretty heavy on video content, I figured, hey, if I'm going to make videos, I'm at least going to give my space to talk as much as I want to. <laughs> so I'm going to go to YouTube instead. Um, so I have been working on ways to you know, build up my audience and connect in ways outside of Instagram. Yes, I still use Instagram. It's, you know, it's still part of what I, I do to market my art and build community and, you know, market my classes that I teach online, but it's not the only thing that I do. And because it's not the only thing that I do, it doesn't feel bad for me. It's, it's something that I can show up for and, you know, use it knowing that it's trying to use me <laughs> at the same time. And I can focus on the other avenues of art marketing that feel better to me and that I'm willing to spend more time on and I'm interested in pursuing even further. So if you're feeling crappy about Instagram, just know that it's hard for most people right now. And I would really like to encourage you to try something else, try something different you know, try, try a different way of marketing your art. Try, try Pinterest, try being on, um, <laughs> threads or blue sky, or, um, you know, if you want to make video, try being on, um, like YouTube or focusing on SEO on your website, or if you're able to focus on like local ways to promote your art and get in touch with clients and customers there, Instagram is not the only thing that's, that's the important thing to remember is that Instagram isn't the only thing. And if it's making you feel like shit, don't put so much time into it. Go make some more art, go, go make some more art, work on your craft and worry less about social media. All right. That's my Instagram lecture for today. Apparently I have feelings. So I've painted on all my tree shapes now. And I'm going to start adding the tree trunks. So I'm actually just using straight from the tube, this um, beautiful russet brown color from Holbein. Um, it's, this is again, artist gouache. So this is a water soluble gouache, which is why I have it in a tin because I can rewet these. And I'm just using the side of this brush. This is still my, um, my number two brush. And I am just adding little tree trunks. They don't have to touch. They don't have to be perfect. They're essentially just little cute little triangles, <laughs> cute little triangles, cute little rectangles at the base of each one of these trees. So we're just going to ground these. Um, now you see at the bottom, 
it's a little crowded down here. Uh, these three trees are kind of smushed together a little bit. If I could go back in time or if I had an undo button, I would make sure that the two trees on either side were skinnier, <laughs> a little taller, a little skinnier, but that's okay. So now I'm going to start adding in little details and I'm going to be using my zero number zero round brush and I'm using an indigo blue and I'm just adding in some little details to each one of the trees um, just to give some more, some more definition and a little bit more interest. And, you know, I know these aren't like the most Christmassy of colors <laughs> to be using like these, these moody greens and, you know, I'm using indigo blue now and I'm planning on using a little bit of that opera rose to add some more details here. So it's not the most Christmassy look, but like, does it have to be? Not really, because number one, it's in my sketchbook. And number two, I know that there are those of you out there who like me, don't really dig traditional Christmas colors. And you know, this is, this will give you a nice way to like fill some sketchbook pages or to paint some cute trees on some greeting cards or some gift tags for your family without feeling like everything has to be like the greenest and the reddest ever. <laughs> so hopefully you're finding some joy in this as well. Now to make these trees Christmassy, <laughs> um, I'm going to start adding in some little white and pink details. So I've got some titanium white that I'm going to use to start adding in just some little like baubles and maybe some little like snowy details here and there. So I'm just going to start by adding a few rows of dots. Um, and then as I go through here, I'm just going to kind of vary um, the dots on different trees. And then I think on um, maybe the bottom left tree, maybe we'll do like some white blobs that look kind of like their, their snow. Uh, just, just again to make these look a little bit more festive since they're kind of moody. <laughs> they're the angsty teenagers of Christmas trees is what they are. Um, but it's just, you know, I don't, I don't dig those colors. Um, but like for, you know, my sketchbook work for me personally, like I like working in, you know, these colors that are non-traditional, it makes me really happy. And I'm actually really excited to add in a little bit of opera rose at the end. I'm going to add some more like little like baubles in the opera rose. And then I'm going to add some little like stars on top of some of the trees. And, you know, the cool thing about using like an opera rose for something like this is that it's, it's a little bit transparent. So because you'll get a little bit of like a hint of the green underneath that opera rose, it's going to look a little bit more traditional than you might think. Like it's going to look a little bit more red than pink. So it's going to soften the whole look. And then it's just going to, you know, having that pop of like a bright color is really going to bring everything together in this cute little sketchbook painting, I think. So I'm really excited about that. And it's going to also complement the russet brown trunks having that little pop of like a warmer color is going to warm those up even more. All right, and now it's time to dip into this opera rose. So this is just straight from the tube. I do have this added to this palette of greens. Like if you remember the other side of the tin already has this opera rose, 
but I wanted to make sure since I'm planning on layering this on top of the green, I wanted to make sure that I was going to have a thick enough application. And sometimes if I work directly from these pans, it doesn't give me like a, a nice thick application because I'm adding water to it, a lot of water to it. So when I'm using from the tube like this, I've barely added any water at all. And it's going to give me the most opaque application of this. But also, like I said earlier, this is not a completely opaque color. So when I'm painting over the tree, like the actual greens of the trees, some of the green in the background is going to show through a little bit. Like you can see right here, I'm adding these dots to the trees and it's toning down the brightness of the opera pink. And it's really um, letting it look a little bit more traditional while still feeling not super traditional. It's managing to do both things. Isn't that magical? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Now these are, I think this tree might be my favorite. I really love um, just how like it gets a little wonky at the bottom. And I love the brush strokes on that tree a lot. It's, it's my favorite of all of these. If I had to pick a favorite, it would be that one. I think my second favorite is probably the tree in the bottom right hand corner. Although again, if I painted that tree again, I would focus on making it a little taller and a little skinnier so it wasn't crowding out the trees at the bottom. But you know what? For a sketchbook, we're, we're never being hard on ourselves in our sketchbooks. We're just, you know, making notes of things that we might do differently in the future, but enjoying the process for right now. At least that's what I'm doing today. Just enjoying the process of painting a really simple motif and using non-traditional colors and seeing what kind of marks and shapes that I can use to create these simple designs. It's really fun. So let's see here. I think I want to add a little bit more pink in a few places. I think some of these other trees might need a little touch. I don't, I'm going to draw a different kind of star on the top because I don't want it to be all so samey. So I'm going to add this little, it looks almost like an asterisk <laughs> on the top, on the top of these trees. Um, but I think it's cute and I think it ties everything together just a little bit more. So now we've got a nice balance of the whites and the pinks and all the beautiful moody greens and this Christmas tree painting. So I hope you enjoyed following along with me um, and enjoyed my very short lecture about Instagram. I have a lot of feelings about this. Hit subscribe to get more videos in the future and head over to the artist greenhouse for more about making art and building a cozy creative business.